The month of Ramadan wasn't always free from hardships, even for the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his companions. One of these hardships was the Battle of Badr, one of the few battles mentioned in the Holy Quran. Fought on the 17th of Ramadan or 13th of March 624, two years after the Hijra, it was the first large-scale engagement between the Muslims and the Quraysh. Opposing around 313 Muslims were 950 well-equipped Meccan soldiers. What circumstances led to the battle? What allowed the Muslims to win? And what were its consequences for the centuries that followed? If you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe to the Muslim Vibe on YouTube and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video. When the Prophet Muhammad moved to Medina, the Meccans used to launch raids against Medina to steal livestock belonging to the Muslims. During those first couple of years or months after the Prophet's migration to Medina, the Quraysh and the people of Mecca necessarily hadn't stopped their onslaught and strategizing in terms of how they were going to damage the Muslim community and really try to you know, eradicate the presence and the prestige of the Messenger وسلم, because they, consi they consistently saw him as this massive threat toward their power, toward their authority, toward their um, opportunity financially, economically, so on. Abu Sufyan, um, along with a lot of the other nobles uh, of Mecca and of the Quraysh, they gathered together in order to virtually create this perhaps economic onslaught against the early Muslim community. Abu Sufyan was coming back from a voyage from Syria back toward Mecca, holding a lot of wealth and property again in their method to strategize about how they were going to continue to isolate the Prophet um, And the Prophet recognized that this was going to be a threat to um, the small growing Muslim community in Medina, as well as those who were still remained in Mecca. Shortly after the Hijra, under unbearable pressure and out of necessity, the verses allowing Muslims to defend themselves were revealed, where God says, Permission to fight has been given to those who were being fought because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is competent to give them victory. In January 624, two months before the battle, eight Muslims on a mission to obtain information disguised as pilgrims were discovered by a Meccan caravan. They decided to fight, then seized its goods and took prisoners and killed one of its men, Amr bin al-Hadrami. However, the killing took place during the month of Rajab, a sacred month for Arabs, in which fighting was prohibited. This offence led the Quraysh to send an army to protect their caravans. In April 624, it was reported Abu Sufyan was leading a caravan from Syria to Mecca, containing weapons to be used against the Muslims. The Prophet gathered 313 men and went to Badr, 70 miles away from Medina, to intercept the caravan. However, Meccan spies informed Abu Sufyan about the Muslims coming to intercept his caravan. Abu Sufyan changed his course to take another path to Mecca and sent a message to Mecca. Abu Jahal replied to Abu Sufyan's request and gathered an army to fight against the Muslims. Remember, war is something that even when you take a look at sort of the socio-political cir circumstances in the world today, it doesn't all of a sudden start, you know, overnight. There might be certain, again, sparks that occur, but it's something that builds up over the course of months, over the course of years, over the course of decades sometimes. When one understands sort of that early history, especially of the Prophet and the early Muslim community in Mecca, their marginalization, recognizing the power, the authority, the wealth, the respect that the Quraysh and the people of Mecca had, and what real detriment that they could have made toward the Muslim community in Medina at that very sort of formative period in the religion of Islam and in the, in the preaching um, and the message of the Prophet Salam, we can understand that it was for the general good of all of those Muslims in Medina that the Prophet Salam had to do what he had to do. At midnight on the 13th of March, the Quraysh marched into the Valley of Badr. The Muslims arrived at the Badr wells one day before the Quraysh. The Muslims also brought 70 camels and two horses. Companions such as Abu Bakr, Umar, Ali and Hamza took part. Some of the most important Quraysh joined, including Abu Jahal, for various reasons. Some were out to protect their financial interests in the caravan. Others wanted to avenge Ibn al-Hadrami, the guard killed at Nakhla. The battle began with champions from both armies emerging to engage in combat. My brother, Shaiba! My son, Walid, and myself, Ubaidah and I, 
Captain Halley. The Muslims defeated the Meccan champions in three on three melees. Ali and Hamza killed their opponents. They both then assisted Ubaidah. While Ubaidah's opponent died immediately, Ubaidah was mortally wounded to the leg. Ali and Hamza then carried Ubaidah back into the Muslim lines where he later died. Both armies then began showering each other with arrows before attacking each other with melee weapons. When the Prophet gave the order to charge, he threw a handful of pebbles at the Meccans whilst yelling, Defaced be those faces. God, terrify their hearts and invalidate their feet. The Meccans, under strength and unenthusiastic about fighting, promptly broke and ran. The battle itself only lasted a few hours and was over by the early afternoon. The Holy Quran describes the force of the Muslim attack in many verses. If you are steadfast and mindful of Allah, your Lord will reinforce you with 5,000 swooping angels if the enemy should suddenly attack you. 14 companions of the Holy Prophet were martyred in the battle and 70 men from the army of the Quraysh were killed including Abu Jahl. Amongst the 70 Quraysh who were killed, it is said that 22 to 35 died at Ali's hands. Many others were taken as prisoners and treated with dignity and respect. The Muslim army caught approximately 50 prisoners of war. Instead of holding those prisoners of war um, and um, taking them as slaves as was often done um, during that period of time, the Prophet ﷺ instructed that these 50 prisoners of war, if they were literate and they had the opportunity to teach 10 Muslims how to read and write, they would be freed. It's incredible if you really think about it, right? In order to stress, number one, um, this idea of etiquette around war. Number two, to stress the importance of education. And if these 50, they did not have um, the ability to teach 10 Muslims how to read and write, then they could pay a ransom. That money would be taken by the Prophet ﷺ and redistributed to the poor, to the needy, to the orphans, and to the widows of Medina. And if they did not have the wealth, then they could be freed. The Battle of Badr was decisive in asserting the strength of the Muslims in the Arabian Peninsula and for the Quraysh and all other tribes to acknowledge Muhammad as one of the most important chiefs in the region. The other major beneficiary of the battle was Abu Sufyan who safely protected the Makkan caravan and with the loss of Abu Jahl was to become the leader of the Quraysh. The Battle of Badr is mentioned in Surah Ali Imran and is the subject of Surah Anfal. The Battle of Badr is a powerful reminder that no matter how challenging the fights we face are or how strong our opponent can appear, victory is always possible for those who put their faith in Allah. For more great content like this, be sure to subscribe to The Muslim Vibe on YouTube and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video.